Have you spoken to Puff lately? Do y'all talk or what? Well, actually, we not we not really on speaking terms, mm -hmm. but you know, I still pray for the dude and okay. I pray that all is well with him. Yeah. Okay. Well, Pete Diddy's supposed to be releasing a gospel album. What what came to your mind when you when you when you when you heard that? What 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 thoughts did you have? Y'all want me to answer that? I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, can RuPaul put out a gospel album? With a name like Mace, it's not hard to believe that he was blinded by the money and diamonds. It took him to see over a thousand bottles of baby oil to realize that he was in a slippery situation. The whole public knew Mace was suffering from mental retardations and only God can save him. And that's why he went to the church. Allegedly, Mace is getting ready to tell his testimony, but not in the church this time. He about to tell it in the court of law, allegedly according to a lot of sources out there. Everybody in the industry want to see Diddy fall because everybody in the industry been to his parties and participated in strange things against their will. They was heavily intoxicated by lace bottles of Syrah that made them drop their guards and hop in that man bed with all the other celebrities in the game. And people feel like he need to pay for that. The rumor is Mace was Diddy's boy toy for all of that time he was with Bad Boy. He seen the devil. And that's what made him run to the Lord. Even Cameron spoke about how he went over to Mace's house and saw Diddy's sex toy sitting in that man's sink. Now, let me ask you about this other allegation on your uh, dinner time that was like, whoa, right. did you really Hold see on. a dildo? <laughs> that's a that's word in the my, bathroom. My son could stop breathing right now. now on, his, on his life, <laughs> on my son's life, could stop breathing right now. Me, Puff, okay, Puff had a, a brown, and that's no disrespect to Puff. Puff wasn't there, so I don't know. Just telling you. Puff had a brownstone, I believe, on 35th Street. And like Park Avenue between um Park it's some brownstones down there, I believe 30, 35th or 36th. And Mace was staying there. And um I went to go meet him down there one day so we could bust a move. This is when he just signed with Bad Boy. He didn't even have an album out yet. He was just getting signed. And I went to use a bathroom and it was a dildo um on the bathroom sink. And Sheesh. when I came out, I asked him what's about. He like that's homeboy's joint, you know. I don't know what it's about. He always have girls over here, but I don't know. I said, well, this one your sink. This is your bathroom. You're using this bathroom. <laughs> I don't know where his bathroom at, you know what I'm saying? So, and that's word to my son, because stop breathing. I but swear to God. But you know what, guys? Use dildos on girls sometimes. That's true. We seen some. But he you know, said, I'm not saying he did. Right. I'm You're just, just telling you what I'm saying. It was just awkward. I'm not saying that right. he did. It was for either one of their personal use. I'm just telling you what I saw. People thought Cassie was going to be loyal to Diddy forever because he put her on, he put money in her pocket, talking about Gucci, Louis Vuitton, anything a woman could ever ask for. He made sure that Cassie had it. And when it comes to B.I.G., Diddy ain't showing him no love nowadays, and he wasn't showing him no love in the past. Actually, he showed Mace more love than he ever did Biggie probably because he felt like Mace was more sexually attractive. You've seen the pictures of them together. Diddy was in love with this man. Some people say he was even infatuated with Mace. And when they asked him who he favored more, Mace or Biggie, even though Biggie is the reason why Diddy decided to rap, Biggie is the one that got his record label off the ground. Biggie is the one that gave Puff the confidence to pick up the mic and rhyme. But when they asked him who deserved more credit for his solo career, he still said Mace. You gave Mace more credit for launching your solo career than Big? I thought Big was the person that pushed you to really want to Not be a Big solo Big pushed me, but, mm -hmm. but but Mace gave me the the, the, the words, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, okay. Mace, you know what I'm saying, was, you know, was, was, was like, you know, was Helping like write and craft the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we was a, we was like a group. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right. You ain't want to see no puff without Mace or mm -hmm. Mace without Puff. When you yeah. saw him, you saw me, yeah. me, him. And so, yeah, no, I definitely as an artist, you know what I'm saying? I would say Mason definitely 
you know, um, you know, Jada Kiss as far and and Source Money. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, yeah. a bunch of people mm -hmm. you know, I have to have to credit it with. Mm -hmm. But as far as me breaking through like that, I could be an artist and I was an artist. Mm -hmm. Big had told me that. But as far as like, you know, if I had to say say one person, I would have to say, you know, what I'm saying Mace. What the, the rumor is Mace and Puff had more of a relationship than just music. And Mace been abused on so many levels to where he deserved money, he deserved respect, and plenty of other things that Puff not trying to give to him. And now that Puff down, Mace can finally be heard. And it's going to take for him to get up in that courtroom, allegedly, so the whole world can hear his story. And even though Puff gave Biggie more credit than Mace, Mace gave Biggie more credit than he could ever give Puff because once upon a time, Mace was allegedly Biggie's boy toy. He said it himself. If it wasn't for Big, he wouldn't even know how to write a rap or make a hit song. He said he was rolling Biggie's blunts, washing and folding his drawers, running errands and doing all that weird stuff that Lil C's was doing for Biggie when he was alive. Mace was out there doing it too. Not to mention, Mr. C was all in the mix. And you figure... You got Mr. C, Biggie, and Puff for all in the same scenario, and here come Mace. What they had him doing behind the scenes for real. Greatness come from greatness. If you never achieve greatness, it's going to be because you never was with nobody great. Greatness come from greatness. I had to be a student with Big. I rolled his blunts. I went to get his weed. I went to drive his girls home. For an opportunity to learn how to write those kind of songs. Uh. Greatness come from greatness. And people, this whole new mentality that I can do it all by myself. No, Jordan needed Scotty and he needed Paxson. And they hit and puff with all different types of sexual allegations. But when it boils down to it, they got to get down to what really happened with that tragedy that happened at that college where them kids got stampeded. They gonna wanna know what really happened with Tupac cause Keefe D still in jail and he trying to get out. And he rather throw Puff under the bus so he can go free. So they wanna know about that. And on top of that, they wanna know what really happened with Biggie. There's so many people implicated in that. Gene Dill gonna be talking for the next three years or depending on how long this trial gonna last about the whole Biggie scenario. So we gonna see a resurgence with that because Mace was with Snoop Dogg and the rest of the dog pound and they was telling him that Biggie was gonna get got. He was at a celebrity basketball game in Cali when Biggie was out there getting all them death threats. And the reason why they were so cool with Mace is because they knew allegedly that Mace was Diddy's new boy toy. And like the song say, ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. So y'all going to have to ask Mace when he get in court, what exactly happened with him and the dog pound? Y'all got to remember Snoop Dogg's first album was titled Doggy Style. So Mace knew that Biggie was going to die. But if he talk about that in court, they might try to put him in cuffs. But then again, Gene Dill's testimony can save a whole lot of people except for Puff because it seemed like Puffy is the only person that Gene Dill really wanted to see behind bars. Mace knew that those cats and people was trying to get at Big. He had to know because he went to the game. And when he came back to that basketball game in California, the week of uh, the Soul Train, when you see that picture when he was with those dog pound guys in the whole nine yards, he knew they wanted Big and Puff. And he told Puff. And Puff probably told him not to say nothing to Big because that would have probably spooked Big a little more so Big didn't go out. That weekend. You understand? Because I'm sure if Mace would have been like, yo, big. Yo, them niggas talking about they want to get you. They want to, the, the people, the fans, all the people in the gym, those, those, those dudes up there, big. They want you, bruh. If Mace would have told big that shit, I can't imagine big not getting on that plane saying, man, shit, I'm going to London. Or somewhere. You understand what I'm saying? So, if he's haunted 
by the voice of St. James or the ghost of St. James or however you want to put it, it's because he didn't do his due diligence as a label mate, as an artist to get at big to tell him, nigga, do what I did. You see, Mace didn't go, right? <laughs> Mace ain't go, Mace of Bethel didn't go to the party. But he was in the room with Brandy. Okay. <laughs> but that's what that means, man, you know. It's looking like there's a deeper explanation for Mace being involved with the dog pound. Cam Ron shares a story of him and Mace having threesomes together. Now, people, it's starting to connect the dots. Cam don't already let the world know that he found that Wang Wang at Mace's house when he was living with Diddy or whatever. Now he's saying that him and Mace was actually getting it in with a chick, two guys and a girl. So he witnessed Mace have sex with a female that he was also getting it in with at the same time. So if this is not weird behavior between these two men, then I don't know what is. But if Mace take this to court, like they saying he taking it to court, he can put all this type of behavior on what he learned from Puff that trickled down the cam to Jim Jones and Joel Santana, allegedly. Cameron shared a story about him and Mace hooking up with a woman at the same time, stating how much he missed the 90s. So it was a bunch of weird old freak off business going on back then. Mace and Cam, was getting it in together, even though it was a female involved, they still was in the bed together, enjoying each other's company. Y'all gotta listen at this. Hey, hey listen, <laughs> what I'm telling you is, <laughs> I wish we, I wish we could talk about the 90s. <laughs> you can talk about it, Oh, we can talk about it? <laughs> yeah. When we was getting big and business, <laughs> was we ever passionate? Y'all remember one time, I, 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 my man let me talk about the past. We was in the whorehouse one time, me and Murder. Me and Murder's in this whorehouse. So we left the bitch, we took the bitch out the whorehouse. <laughs> I had a crib on 144th, yeah. little stash crib over there between South and South and Lennox. Yeah. We bought this bitch over there. And <laughs> <laughs> so Mace was kind of on the way up. He didn't have his deal, but he's popping like it was about to happen. Yeah. And I'm his man, because you know, we still all of them. So the bitch suck, pardon me, lady. Like, we already talking bitch without she sucking his. I gotta wait for us to get, <laughs> <laughs> get my dick sucked. Because I'm not hard yet, boys. I ain't getting hard on how sucky it is. <laughs> so when he start hitting it, I go get head. Yeah. And so she giving me head, he hitting it from the back. And he start hitting her, saying, You wasn't sucking my dick. Like that. <laughs> I said, <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, it's my nigga. <laughs> Pause, 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 no diddy, no diddy, no diddy. He said May started hitting the chick in the back of the head because he was jealous that she was pleasing Cam more than she pleased him. And they giggling, laughing about it. They both was in the act. Cameron witnessed Mace being pleasured and Mace witnessed Cameron being pleasured. So, hey man, it is what it is. If he go to court, all of this can be placed on Puff. All of the freaky business that go on in Hollywood, it don't matter who it is. If they was involved with Diddy, they can put it on him. New accusations against Sean Diddy Combs and a lawsuit a woman claims that he raped and drugged her. This comes as he's being held on federal sex trafficking charges. Dick Brennan is here now with more on this, Dick. Well, Maurice and Christine Combs is locked up in the notorious Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn, and he reportedly has been relocated to a new area for reserved for detainees requiring special protection and additional security. But now there are new accusations in a civil suit a woman saying she was raped and videotaped and left with long-term trauma. Flashbacks, nightmares, and intrusive thoughts make me feel like it's a constant struggle. Thalia Graves says she's never recovered from the emotional and physical agony she says she endured at the hands of Sean Diddy Combs. The violation I have experienced during the assault 
has had lasting effects on my body, causing ongoing health problems and complications. In a federal lawsuit, Graves alleges Combs and another man drugged and raped her back in 2001 at his New York recording studio when she was just 25 years old. Her attorney, Gloria Allred, read the allegations made in the suit. Defendants caused plaintiff to be de- depicted in a video image, unclothed and with intimate body parts exposed. Combs is locked up at the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn nearly a week after he pleaded not guilty to federal sex trafficking and racketeering charges. The judge denied him bail pending his trial, which could be a year away. Realistically, see him spending most of the time behind bars before trial. It's, a, it's very much of a possibility at this point. The accusations brought by Graves mark the 12th civil suit brought against Combs. He's denied the allegations in those cases. Graves says she's relieved he's behind bars now. I want to continue on this journey towards recovery and healing. I'm glad that he is locked up, but that's a temporary feeling of relief. Now, the lawsuit was filed under the New York City Victims of Gender Motivated Violence Protection Act. It comes during a two-year window that suspends legal deadlines and allows sexual assault victims to sue over abuse that might have been otherwise too old for the statute of limitations. Christina Maurice. All right, Dick, thank you. Whoever this woman is, she ain't got a name. You got 120 additional people coming forward. Don't nobody know who these people are. And that's why they piling them all together like that, because... Don't nobody know who these people are. But if Mace take the stand like they allegedly said he's going to do, he's going to garner way more attention than these 120 victims, way more attention than the woman that y'all just got finished listening to. Because even though her story sounds sad and gory, don't nobody care because she ain't got no glory. She ain't got no music out there. Cassie only had one hit, but that one hit was enough to have people know who she is. She a household name because she was with Puff. He took her to the red carpet plenty of times, but these victims, don't nobody know their songs or what they do for a living and don't nobody care. So if Mace do get up there and tell his side of the story and let the world know that he was Diddy's boy toy the whole time he was with Bad Boy. Now these are allegations and speculations, but the stuff we know about Puff is not far-fetched to think that him and Mace had some freaky business going on because Puff is a sexual deviant and whoever he's done business with, he has sexual relationships with them, including Biggie and everybody else that was signed to his label. If that's not the case, then he's not as bad as they trying to make him out to be. Sean Diddy Combs is facing 120 additional sexual assault lawsuits that will be filed in New York. So... All these people coming forward, but the people he did business with ain't never have to be subjected to none of this nonsense. Somebody tell me where that makes sense. A press conference was held earlier today in Houston where a group of lawyers revealed the massive amount of suits that are pending filing. The biggest secret in the entertainment industry that really wasn't a secret at all has finally been revealed to the world. Now, they're about to reveal a bigger secret. Mace is about to tell his story. And he may be the biggest victim of them all because he was there the night when the notorious B.I.G. lost his life. The night that Biggie Small died, where were you and what did you do in the aftermath right after Biggie Small died? Hmm. Where was I? I was in the hotel. What people? That sounds like a Keefe D question. <laughs> no, they, they didn't say you was involved. They went to, <laughs> yeah, I guess they knew everybody from Bad Boy was out there. Oh yeah, I was in the hotel. I was actually in the hotel with, with a young lady. And when you heard this information, what did what was your next actions? My next actions. What after what? When you heard Biggie died, did you stay in your hotel room? Did you leave out? Did you um, want to go back I to New actually, York? I actually was trapped in a hotel. Now I want to ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean trapped? 
It was about probably like 70, 70 or so bloods in the in the hallway. I couldn't even leave my room. How'd you get out? Um, one of the, the guys. Why would it be 70 bloods in your hallway after Biggie Smalls died? Um, actually, after Big got killed, they was probably looking for more bad boy artists. And I couldn't even leave the room to um Gene Dill, the one the officer came had to come get me. Damn. I sh up. Sorry. I was, I was left in, in, in LA. And that and from that day I always said, you know what, I'm out of here. When you say you was left, what do you mean you was left? Like I was I was Who left. Who left you? I came there with people. I didn't leave with those people. <laughs> you know how I go. <laughs> My Find last question on this situation, because I see you, you must be saving this for the book. How did you? How did you eventually get out the hotel? After, where did you go when Gene came to pick you up? How'd you get back to New York or the East Coast or wherever? Um, to my to my recollection, I think we um, I think we had to go to Vegas or something like that to get back to New York. There you have it. That's where Mace was at, and that's what happened in the aftermath of Biggie Small's death. Mace got ran out of Cali, had to go to Vegas, then turned around and got ran out of Harlem and had to move to Atlanta to start his career as a pastor. They saying that he linked up with Bishop Eddie Long after he left Puff, and that's another suspect scenario that he may address if he do wind up going to court. Jim Jones, this Mace, and Cameron not that long ago because they decided to link back up even though cam said a bunch of pause worthy things about mace it got jim jones on the suspect list as well because birds of a feather flock together and since he started the bird gang with max b who eventually started doing business with french montana and that links back to diddy so everybody in harlem it seemed like it circles back around the Diddy one way or another. And that's why they all looking suspect, man. Cameron and Mace mending their friendship has been celebrated by fans of both rappers who have teamed up for the online sports talk show. It is what it is. Shout out to Cam and Mace. But Jim Jones ain't feeling none of that. He wished that they were still beefing because if they was, wouldn't nobody be able to connect the dots with all of these brothers and Puff? And if Mace go to court, y'all already know it's going to be a throwback of Jim Jones going at Mace on the radio the same way he did back in the day. Mace been having booty goons chasing him around his whole career because of his relationship with Puff. And when Puff's crib got raided, Mace responded in a way that had fans scratching their heads like, do he love Puff? Do he still got feelings for this man? Do he hate him? People still confused about their relationship. But one thing for sure, back in the day, they was a tag team duo with the shorts on and everything, allegedly, in the privacy of their homes. Sex toys all on the sink in their residence. They was buddies for real, for real. But now people don't understand what's going on here. Mace calls Diddy's home getting raided by Homeland Security for sex trafficking the big payback. So was Diddy sex trafficking him back in the day? And that's the reason why he fell in a certain type of way about it? Hold up. Kill I'm doing good. What's up, man? How you doing? Killer, I'm doing good, man. Reparations is getting closer and closer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to <laughs> give you your percentage. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to do with that money. That's all yours, man. I was on the next boat. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, man. I'm getting closer and closer, closer huh, man? Closer and closer. Okay. <laughs> The big yo, payback. Yo, you, this has been the last year. It's really kind of been the big payback for you, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you kind of, you kind of, you kind of. Uh, last week, you went destiny. <laughs> yeah. You went destiny. <laughs> you know what? It, you know what happened yesterday, right? Yeah, man. That's what I'm trying to say. What, it's going what, crazy. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let you start. What did you see that happen? Oh, yesterday was the anniversary of Biggie Small's album, 27 years yeah. later. That's what I seen yesterday. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, that was real. 
It's amazing that 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 all of this would transpire on that on that day. What's crazy is is yesterday was Biggie Small's 27th anniversary of Life After Death, and it was also the Diplomat Immunity album 21st anniversary. Mm. Shit, this shit going on. <laughs> shit is going on. Around. Yeah, man. I was just saying this. That day oh, yesterday man. was kind of. That's eerie, yeah, man. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, that was crazy. That's kind of crazy, man. I had no idea that, you know, the internet lets you know, because I don't be knowing these dates for my albums or other people's albums, but they will remind you, man. Yeah. That's all you see? In a lot. <laughs> well, that's what I, I seen, seen. That's what I was. I seen helicopters all kind, <laughs> kind all of right. stuff. Okay, it's a lot of things. Yeah. Yo, they seen that Puff House got raided the same day of Biggie's anniversary, the Diplomat anniversary. So they felt like they got a lot to celebrate when it comes to Puff downfall because over the years, Mace been crying out to the public, letting people know that Diddy did him dirty. Now it's a possibility that he can take the stand and tell his story to the masses. You know the whole world gonna be watching. People in Thailand, people in Jamaica, Africa, people in Australia, Russia, Germany, Ireland, the UK, everybody tuning in to what's happening with Puff. So now Mace got the golden opportunity to get up there in that courtroom and tell his story and best believe people will be listening. You met Puff on a Tuesday. Yeah. Friday you was recording your album. No, I was recording only you. I was recording only you. And once that record came out, it was probably like a week or two later and then I was showing up at a video to do only you. So it was that fast. Then the locks got, the locks was already signed. And then I think like that next week, once the record started going crazy, it was like, yo, we got to sign them. We got to sign them. All right, so we're going to get to it. What did Puff do to piss you the fuck off? How did he do you dirty if he did you dirty? And what is and what is doing dirty if a motherfucker put you on? Mm, that's really good. Let me take my shades off. Um... Now, I can say this because it's not something I didn't say to him. Puff, how, how do I want to say this? Me and Puff was like, I felt like I did more than I got credit for, more than I got paid for. You felt or did you do that? Um, Cause you said felt like okay. Feeling. Let's clear that up. Then. You saying you feeling that? No, we gonna keep it with. I'm, Cause I'm trying to be nice. I never got paid what I was worth, and I never got the respect I was worth. So the disdain that I got for Puff is more like you trying to keep me here, nigga. I'm not here. All my peers is up here. All my peers are bosses. When it's time, just like. Somebody raise somebody up, you know they did work with you. They go from your little man to maybe A and R to something else. He just kept trying to keep me right here, like like he didn't want me to grow at anything. And and to anybody, is that gonna bother you? Yeah. Especially if I'm one. producing the work. Yeah. Puff would go out and party, and I would be in the studio writing the records, and then I just come back and say. He'll say this is his part or that is his part, but I was a person there creating it all. Right. And then, I mean, from the lyrical standpoint, yeah. whether somebody did a beats and even more money, more problems, I came up with that. I came up with the beat too. And I said, Stevie, we need to do this beat and do it like this. So just imagine all of these moments that are taken from you, the, the, the records, the beats, you ain't getting the money, you publishing. ain't getting the publishing, you ain't getting the respect. And I don't think you're like that. No. Oh. So that became really frustrating for me because I'm you looking. You don't think you like that, what that mean? I don't think you would like that. Like. For if a motherfucker <laughs> did you like that, yeah, what the like, story is you listening to, me? And I don't think you like that, to be pulling what you pulling. Yeah, you, you from the ghetto, you like. Yeah, just... like you know what. You know what would come with doing that, but everybody is letting you get away with it. 
everybody. So me quitting after one album, it didn't take long for me to figure it out. Like, I'm not gonna be here with this. I don't care who's here because you're not paying me and you're not respecting me. And that's the real problem. Did you, did, 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 all right. And that's just, that's just, that's just the beginning. All right, then it's, then it's people that try to do bodily harm with me. They will be in the house with Puff. So I'm like, it's a funny game y'all playing behind the scenes. So when people see me, they just see me turned up. They just see me agitated. They just see me aggressive, but they don't know why. So if somebody, let's just say we run down on Gilly car, we, if we got guns or whatever, where we got them and we trap Gilly. And then the next week you see wallow with me at your house how are you gonna feel yeah i'm snapping out tweaking right? right so now my head is bugging like what's really going on because every time something happened to me it's somebody that's with him but this is supposed to be the nigga i'm signed to this is supposed to be who i'm getting money with and i gotta say this because when people see me irate and they see me aggressive they want to, oh, what is Mace doing? Mace is bugging. No, it's a point you get to that you like, yo, I, I can't I can't let you play because you playing now dangerous games. So imagine somebody doing that and then they over there talking about brother love. Oh. Imagine how you feeling, bro. Oh. So it's like you holding a, you, you, you. I, I can't blame Puff for this because I can't say he's doing it, but I can't say he's not. So if you look at the people who hate on me, right? They're from revolt shows. Who run revolt? Mm. The people that had the biggest problems with Mason, right? The craziest stuff about Mace come from revolt. Who run revolt? I'm still asking y'all because everything people keep doing, I'm like... Why do they keep tripping on me? It's almost like they want me to be something that's going to be detrimental to them because it's not going to be detrimental to me. Damn. So answer that, though, no, since we uh, really no, talk. Uh, run revolt. Did he run revolt? Did yeah, he run, he run revolt. revolt. Right. So when I, when I hit him up and I say, yo, you got people every time they trying to discredit my name, you don't think that blocked me from other deals? You don't think that blocked me from other monies? You don't think that does something to my livelihood? Mace told his side of the story plenty of times and Puff told his side too. But now that Mace allegedly got the opportunity to tell his story in greater detail, it's only right that Puff is able to tell his story in greater detail as well. He did some interviews back in the day where he elaborated on what was going on with him and Mace, but since everything is out in the open, now he can get into the sexual details of their relationship. You can't say there wasn't any because Mace got caught out there in very suspect, sticky situations. They got a show called It Is What It Is. It's hot pink all over the place. And ain't nothing wrong with that. Pink is some pimp shit, man. People ain't say nothing about when Pinky was on Friday with the pink on. There's plenty of pimps that wear pink. So I'm not trying to say Cam is suspect because not only is he with Mace, who is with Diddy, but they also wearing pink. Plus, he was pushing that pink horsepower to Diddy at the same time. It's a whole bunch of weird Harlem stuff going on out here. They claim it Dame Dash be gumming people, his teeth slipping in and out of his mouth. Who knows what's really happening behind the scenes, but Puff got a story to tell as well. What did you think about, right, where you look at an artist, Mace, right? Was upset for you for years. Yes. Then, down the line, he has an artist. Mm -hmm. And then recently, his artist is upset because he's basically said, allegedly, that Mace didn't pay him and there was problems. Yeah. And do you look at that and be like, that's an, that's just an executive or is it one of those things like I told you? No, I don't I don't, I don't look at it like that. Um first of all cuz what he had a problem first with you of did, all, he, his artist first of, the same first thing. of all, see I didn't do nothing to him. So let's go back to the first the first of all. The first of all is is there has been negative propaganda put out about me that's not true. Mm -hmm and has really stained, tried to stain 
staying my legacy. I've always been a person, I don't like to get in just talking people's business and things like that. But not right now. I have made it my purpose that when I come back, I can't have y'all, y'all, y'all following me because I am here to be a leader and to give some direction. If you think that I'm a scumbag that will ever steal anything, my name is Diddy, Sean Combs. I never took nothing from nobody a day in my life. All I've ever given is is opportunity and 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 more money than a person was making. So when I hear like or I see things and I'm like, wow, this 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 vibe that they got on me, like I'm big red or something. I came here, I had to open up the doors. So you're saying you I don't made, you, 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 you don't made, steal from artists is what you're saying? Never. Never. So how never, does a narrative like that happen not, with so not, many different not, people? Because people have this thing called the the tap out button. When you get to a certain point and the money is running low, you wanna you gotta run this hustle to try to find somebody to blame. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I have all my receipts. And so we are gonna do a special, a retrospective with all the artists, and we're gonna get this narrative clear because it comes from different tactics when people wanna get out of contracts. And and a lot of people that speak on this, y'all don't know the business, y'all don't know what y'all are talking about. So it's gonna be a teaching moment of love because it is important, I feel, fight for your reputation. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna fight for my reputation. I'm gonna fight for the honorable man I am, the righteous king that I am. I'm not perfect, you know what I'm saying? There could have been an accountant mess up on this one or that one, things that happen in the business. But me actually, like, I'm running a hustle to get money. I started de delivering papers at 12 years old. I was a millionaire when I was 19. You know what I'm saying? And so I will be making sure that the truth comes out because that's not going down in, 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 in my legacy. And to me, that's the worst thing in the world is a thief. The thief is the worst thing. His hand should be chopped. Her hand should be chopped off. His or her hand should be. That's the way I feel about somebody taking something from somebody that ain't theirs. You know what I'm saying? When you could go out and you could go and work for something. And so that right there... Um, I just, just, you know, just in general, it, you know, the Mace thing, you know, I did one album with Mace. One album. How much money do you think I owe this guy? One album, and then he became a fake pastor and went and conned people, and then y'all gonna let him throw dirt on the God's name? We going, we, I wrote each and every one, and each and every body, anybody could come and step up. Bring your receipts. But I'm not playing. I'm back outside and I'm fighting back for us. And I'm also doing do a little fighting back for me. You know what I'm saying? So how much money does? And I'm, I'm just throwing this out. How much money does somebody like a Mace owe you? Because the, the reason I Mace say that, owes me three million dollars. That's <laughs> facts. I got the receipt. Second album, you gave money to do a second album, never delivered. Did the album never delivered? You know okay. what I'm saying? And I'm not gonna go back and forth with Mace. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm not going back and forth with nobody. I'm just gonna. If I'm here, I'm going to speak up for myself. I'm going to Absolutely. speak up for myself now. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm not going to have you think something that I I hate. I hate a thief. I hate somebody that don't got. And I don't hate nobody, but that's with with somebody that just gotta take something that somebody else worked for mm -hmm. just for their benefit. And they fin. I I don't like that. So you know you're what I'm really saying? doing a special, like you're taping a special to address. I think these. Diddy just came up with that idea right now. No, no, oh, I was on. more <laughs> saying, you know. I'm gonna use, you know, I have a very, I have a very um, successful, thank you mm -hmm. to everybody for supporting network. Mm -hmm. So Revolt. yeah, I'm gonna go and tell my story on 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 my network with one of my podcasts, and I'm gonna also get the artists that that you know together to to um you know help me clear this up. What would the you lot know, say? Like, I spoke to a lot. Yeah, I told a lot. They gonna help me clear it up. Yeah. 
They know, I mean, people, I mean, the truth going to be the truth. But we're going to get to the truth. As long as I'm outside, we're going to get, not trying to start nothing with nobody. Mace, I love Mace. If it is, and I will tell anybody, anybody thinks I owe something, show me the receipt. You get paid in 24 hours. Because sometimes there's accounting problems. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Y'all going to have to let me know how y'all feel about this in the comment section. Is y'all looking forward to Mace getting up there on the stand and telling his truth? Because all these other victims out there, we don't know if it's a money grab or if it was consensual and now they want to make up these claims so they can get a bag out of Puff. Well, Mace, it'd be a whole lot different if he got up there and told his story. That's like if Mary J. Blige decided that she wanted to flip and tell the real deal about Puff. People will be listening very, very hard to what this woman have to say. And for Mace being a male in the situation, you had plenty of men come forward and we ain't never know who they was. Little Rod came forward. Some dude that's in jail thought he got a hundred mil up out of Diddy. It's a bunch of men trying, but there's only one man that's still standing that we know something definitely went wrong with him and Puff. He joined the church for crying out loud. He had to get away from him. How deep was that relationship? The world would love to know. I know these is rumors, allegations, and speculations, but somebody tell Mace that he might have to take one for the team. These women ain't gonna be able to tell the story that he able to tell. And since he gave his life to God and he trying to do right by the Lord, maybe he can be the one to bring justice to all of the alleged victims out there. That's if Mace is a victim like that. He probably is, he probably not. He gonna have to tell his side of the story. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about this in the comment section. Like I said, these are all rumors, allegations, and speculations that may come true. Only time will tell. Got so much love for y'all. Poseidon overrule, I'm out.